Standing in front of DKC 6599, this product has actually become a staple for us here in the Upper Gulf Coast and other parts of Texas as well. This is about our third year to look at this product here in Texas, and we, we really like a lot of the agronomic characteristics that this product brings to the lineup. Uh, it's a Tricepta traded product, so it gives us that extra earworm protection through the Viptera trait, which is very important for our area where we still have a lot of crop rotation uh, and rotate corn, cotton, sorghum, and soybeans pretty regularly. We still need that protection for earworms late in the season. Tricepta gives us that, that added protection in our lineup and 65.99 is uh, you know, a very key product for us. If you look out across the field, the stature of the plant is gonna be a medium to medium tall plant height, has, has good ear placement, medium ear placement. Um, you know, this year, uh, some of the things and challenges that we've dealt with, um, with disease, um, cloudy, rainy, windy weather, excuse me, cloudy and windy weather in the month of April. Scott, how does this product handle some of those key diseases that we've seen this year? So, you know, this year we've, southern rust has been the key disease that we've seen this year. If we look back to last year, it was northern corn leaf blight that, that really kind of took over a lot of the, the upper Gulf Coast area of Texas. But this year it's been southern rust. And this product here, DKC 6599, is probably one of the best ones in our lineup that we sell in this environment for both of those diseases and, and definitely on southern rust that we've been seeing this year. What about populations, Scott? What, what kind of populations should we expect to plant this one at? In other words, does this product have any ear flex to it? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, if I, if I think about how this product has performed in, in other areas of my geography, if I, if I go further south where we get into some tougher conditions, typically year over year, where we plant lower populations, 18,000, 20,000, things like that, this particular product in those environments has actually been the number one performer over the last couple of years if we look at all of our market development plot data. And so it's got a lot of drought tolerance to it if we get in those kinds of conditions. But at the same time, under those lower populations, if we can capitalize on some timely rainfalls and, and timely applications of fertility and things like that, even at those lower populations, it does tend to kind of flex and, and provide a little bit of extra yield that, that, uh, that we do end up seeing at the end of the day. So this product is going to travel very well across multiple geographies, different soil types. Then. Absolutely. I, you know, even here in the upper Gulf Coast, if we've got some tougher, uh, tougher soils, more droughty soils, things like that, this is a product that that, we're, that I would say would perform very well under those conditions for sure. But also if we think back to last year, we, we had a very good corn year in the upper Gulf Coast of Texas, one like no one's ever seen before. And this particular product was up there in the mix, even at some really high yield environments. And so I think it, it fits the bill for any kind of acre and really any kind of population as well. You know, like I mentioned with the, with the sandier, droughtier soils, where we typically plant less seed, right, under a dry land condition, this particular product here, to me, is one that, that you need to have on the farm.